Thank you. Um, <clears throat> reading some of the commentary on the riots, you could be forgiven for thinking that Margaret Thatcher still secretly rules Britain. She may be old, she may be infirm, she may even be a little bit batty at the moment, but apparently she still has this country in an iron grip. You know, despite the fact that she left office 20 years ago, uh, apparently her way of thinking can still warp minds, move molecules, cause bus stops to burn down and uh, chicken outlets to be uh, looted. And, and everywhere you turn, uh, someone is trying to pin the blame for the riots on Thatcher and on her bastard neoliberal offspring. So one journalist referred to the rioters as Thatcher's grandchildren. Another says that in using violence to get their hands on stuff, the rioters were aping the ethics of Thatcherism, which apparently are self-indulgence, competition, and violence. And it isn't only left-wing commentators who have been who have wheeled out Thatcher's decrepit body to give it one last beating. Uh, yet right right-wingers as well have also uh, uh, been wondering out loud if Thatcher is in some way to blame for the riots. So uh, Ian Duncan Smith said the riots are partly a product of the fact that Thatcher freed up the markets, but then didn't do the next bit that is, create strong social infrastructure. And as a result of all this post-riot Thatcher bashing, I find myself in the very curious position of being a left-winger, a Marxist in fact, who wants to shout out, leave Thatcher alone, uh, leave Maggie out of this. And I want to say that not because I have any warmth towards Margaret Thatcher, uh, I don't have any at all. Uh, if I had been old enough to be, a to be politically active during her reign, I would have opposed everything that she did and everything that she said. Uh, I, <laughs> I want to, uh, rather, I want to say hands off Thatcher, because it strikes me that in blaming the riots on Thatcher, these commentators get things completely and utterly and spectacularly wrong. Because it wasn't Thatcherites who created the conditions for today's rioters' behavior. It was anti-Thatcherites and post-Thatcherites. Those people who have assumed positions of power over the past 20 years with an eye for making amends for Thatcherism. It is their social policies and their welfare policies that have really torn apart working class communities giving rise to what I call a dictatorship of do-gooders, uh, state actors who are now so intensively involved in every aspect of poor people's lives that there is no space left for social solidarity and community spirit. Now there are many, many things wrong with the post-riot Thatcher blaming. Uh, two things in particular. Firstly, there's the idea that our Thatcher-drenched society is one where everyone is encouraged to boast about all the stuff that they own. You know, one journalist refers to this as the glitzy worship of consumerism. And apparently poor people are now so determined to have the kind of lifestyle led by Wayne Rooney or Fred Goodwin that they decided to smash into some shops and nick some nice things. That is the most boneheaded theory that has come out since the riots took place. It fails to account for the simple fact that poor people have always known that the rich live nicer, plusher, more comfortable lives than they do. Uh, but they didn't regularly go on looting sprees uh, and uh, uh, shoplifting rampages. Also, the recent rioters uh, did not exactly steal luxury goods uh, that might have allowed them to live a glitzy lifestyle. You know, any working class youngster who thinks he can achieve the same lifestyle as Fred Goodwin by stealing tracksuits from JB Sports is in for a, a, a rude awakening. And the second thing that the post-riot Thatcher bashers can't explain is why these rioters effectively destroyed their own communities. If, as we are told, they are ang angry about being jobless, about the recession, about David Cameron's Thatcher-style cuts, why didn't they march to Whitehall, or set up a job-demanding collective, or at least uh, focus their riotous anger on more appropriate targets, like political buildings or job centres, for example? Why did they simply burn down their own local shops and destroy their neighbors' homes and their neighbors' possessions. What they did was eff effectively take a massive dump on their own doorstep. And in the working class community that I come from, that was always considered the worst thing that you could possibly do. And it's no coincidence that the further away you live from these communities, the more convinced you are that the riots were political and principled. The less connection you have with such communities, the less you have to worry about 
community morale and community spirit, the more you can fantasize that the riots were acts of ideological rebellion. And that is why uh, people like Polly Toynbee or Naomi Klein and various radical trustafarians have been, <laughs> have been at the forefront of claiming that the riots were an uprising against the Thatcherite ethos. Because, you know, ensconced in their faraway plush apartments, they can make up any theory they like about what was in fact a very destructive moment for uh, England's working class communities. And what was actually new and distinctive about these riots was the level of carelessness for one's own community. The utter absence of social solidarity. And those things were destroyed not by Thatcherism, but by the post-Thatcher invasion of the welfare state into every aspect of poor people's lives. Today there is an historically unprecedented level of state intervention into the way people live. Right from birth, to school, to parenting, to work or worklessness, right through to old age, there are some communities where people's every financial and social and therapeutic need is catered for by the state. And in effect, communities hit hard by the forces of the market, apologies to Adam Smith Institute, communities hit hard by the forces of the market or the, by poverty, communities which in the past would have disappeared or remade themselves, are now artificially propped up by the welfare state. They are artificially propped up by welfare interventions. They are put on a kind of permanent life support machine courtesy of the state. And in the past, working class communities that had lost their raison d'etre, their incomes and their professions, would simply have dissipated. Some people would have moved on to look for work elsewhere. Others would have gathered together to demand gainful employment. Now, uh, those kind of broken down, whacked communities are held together, forced to continue existing by the scaffolding of the welfare state. People's instinct to move on their instinct to remake their lives, their resourcefulness is completely undermined and negated by uh, the welfare trap. And that gives rise to a really, really dire situation. I mean, a, a, a situation so dire, I think you actually have to go to some of these communities to appreciate how soul-destroying it can be. Because when people become dependent on the state, when they are made dependent on the state, then they are no longer dependent on each other. And that completely eats away at social bonds. It replaces good forms of dependency with a bad form of dependency. It replaces our dependency on friends and family and neighbors, all of which are good, fruitful, uh, uh, kind of autonomy uh, supporting forms of dependency. It replaces those with a uh, dependency of the face on the faceless state, the dependency on uh, people who live far, far away but will give you money just to keep you ticking over. And that completely isolates people and weakens uh, social solidarity and local bonds. And that is the real foundation of the recent rioting. That is the real foundation of the outburst of deeply antisocial local destruction that we saw in England in recent weeks. Because what we have is a new generation of working class people who have been so suckled by the state uh, who have fed on the tea of the state for so long that they don't, have not developed any meaningful social bonds. They've never had to. They've never had to rely on their friends and their family in the way that uh, earlier generations of working class people have had to. Um, and so what we saw in the riots really was an expression of extremely haughty disdain for people's own communities. They simply destroyed their own communities. Why? Because they have no real meaningful bond to them. They are not uh, sustained in any real way by those communities. They are sustained by an external force, which has the effect of alienating them from the very place uh, where they live. Um, and then very finally, there is one more question to answer in relation to these riots, which is why now? You know, the welfare state has been spreading like a demented tentacle creature for 20 or 30 years now a long time, so why did these riots occur now? And I think there's, there's one simple answer to that. It's because of the collapse of the police. The police in this country are a laughing stock. And I say that as someone who's not even a big fan of the police. But where I come from, we call them the film. And, uh, but however, uh, you do expect the police to uh, police local areas when there are disturbances. 
What we have seen in recent years, we have this very curious situation where Britain is increasingly becoming a police state, but without any effective police force. So we are <laughs> spied on constantly, our data is uh, stored, we're filmed every time we walk through the street, but when there's a riot or a disturbance or a huge criminal event, the police are nowhere to be seen and they effectively run away. There was a brilliant photograph from the Notting Hill Carnival of a young man being stabbed. Uh, and if you look at the photographs, it's very interesting because there are two policemen just watching it happen and not doing anything about it, whereas there's this kind of fat guy with his shopping trying to trip up the man who did the stabbing and trying to uh, hold him. It turns out that that fat guy who was doing his shopping is a former member of the Russian police. Uh, so, you know, maybe those are the people we need to get in in order to more effectively. So what we have, in a nutshell, is a situation where the, the welfare state has created a new generation of people who have no sense of social solidarity, and a police state which, which is incapable of policing. When you mix those two things together, you are going to get this kind of youthful violence, and we really should do something about it.